Here we're trying to calculate a bond investor's holding period return. And at first blush, this looks like a pretty complicated problem, but in actuality, it's not um, because it has um, a few simple components that if we can do these one at a time, we can get to the answer pretty quickly. And so let's, uh, let's start by uh, drawing a timeline for what we are ultimately after. So this is what we ultimately want. So since we're looking for the bond investor's actual return, we need to look at the, the, the cash flows that the bond investor actually realizes. And so in this particular case, um, you're gonna buy the bond, hold it for six months, collect a coupon payment, and then immediately sell it. So we only have one semi-annual period on the timeline for the cash flows that the bond investor actually receives. So at the front end of the timeline, the bond investor is going to purchase the bond for some number. We'll call that P0. In time one, bond investor is going to receive a payment and then immediately sell the bond for some other price. And we'll call that P1. Okay, so if we can just get all of these numbers together, um, we can do our return calculation uh, pretty easily. So what do we already know? Well, we already know the coupon payment. So that's $80 per year. So that's split into $40 every semi-annual period. And so we'll go ahead and put the 40 on our timeline, right? So all that we need to calculate then are uh, first this price and this one. So let's do those one at a time. So let's start with P0. Okay, so P0, when an investor first buys this bond, this bond has 14 years remaining till maturity. So there's 28 payments on the initial uh, timeline. These payments are $40 each, and there's a par repayment of $100 at the end. Now, initially, the yield to maturity is 6%. So the yield to maturity is 6% here. And so that gives us a semi-annual discount rate of three, right? So going into a financial calculator, there's I, 28 is N, 1000 is FV, and 40 is PMP. So I'm gonna enter 1000 as FV, 40, as PMT, three as I, and 28 as N, compute PV. And so there's my initial price. Now that I have that, let's go in and calculate P1. This is just one period down the road. So here I have a one, two, three, all the way in to uh, 28 once again. We've still got our 40s here. And so when this bond investor tries to sell the bond one period down the road, um, this is the timeline that's facing whoever buys or sells the bond. So now there's only 27 payments left. Um, the payments are still 40, and then the par value repayment is still 1,000. And so we want the price at time one. And so in order to do that, we can go into our financial calculator again, make N27 payment and FV are the same as they were before. And we note that the yield to maturity is different when this investor sells the bond than when this investor buys the bond. And so we're going to change that I. So yield to maturity is now, so again, this is the discount rate going forward. It's now 8%, and so the new I is going to be four. So let's calculate the new price. $1,000 is FV, 40 is PMT, 27, not 28, 27 is in because there's 27 payments remaining so four goes into i and compute the price and look at that now 
did I need to calculate this number? I really didn't because if I would have clued myself into uh, this relationship here, right, 8% and 8%, I would have known this bond is now selling for par. But I calculated it again uh, just to go through the motions and prove that. Now, all I've got to do, so when I'm calculating the percentage return, is I just need to find the discount rate that sets the present value of all these inflows equal to the, the price. And so uh, I can do that with my financial calculator by first setting this number equal to the payment. There's only one of them, so n equals one. Payment is positive because the investor is gonna receive it. I'll take that and set it to FV because that is to this investor here, right on this one period timeline, that's the future value. That's that's the end of the uh, end of the timeline cash flow. That's also going to be a positive. And then this number here is going to go into PV, and I'll make that a negative because that is what is paid for the bond. So jumping over to the financial calculator, I'll put a thousand in FV, forty in PMT. One is in because there's only one period. Um, one, one, eight, seven point six four one one as a negative number as PV because that's what's being paid, and compute I. Okay, so I is negative twelve point four three percent. So I is negative twelve point four three. Now, just on uh, reporting, so note that that is a semi-annual rate, the semi-annual rate, and so if I ask you for a semi-annual or six-month holding period return, that's your answer. But if I ask you to annualize it, then you're just going to multiply that by two. So just pay close attention to how I ask you to report the numbers. Now, quick note, this is only a one period problem here, but if the investor had held this bond for two, three, four, five, six periods or whatever, the steps would be exactly the same, right? The timeline would just be a little bit longer and this N would be something greater than one.